Hello folks, welcome back to Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again. Well, this is a reaction video to an op-ed that was featured in Business Live, businesslive.co.za, a business publication in South Africa that reports on media and news about business in particular, but also breaking news about politics as well. And this is an op-ed by Chris Roper, who titled it, How the Media Broke the News. Much of the breathless reporting of UCT lecturer Loazi Lushaba's now infamous political science lecture is based on 12 seconds of a 55-minute video. Context is everything. Well, I agree with you, Chris Roper. We agree on that point. I did promise to make at least one reaction video to this. This is going to take probably a long time to unpack, so I'll try to keep this one as brief as possible and maybe do another one. Times Live has seen a 12-second clip of the video. Chris Roper says, my heart sank when I read this sentence embedded in the middle of the story titled UCT launches investigation into academics lecture on Adolf Hitler. What's in question here is the misrepresentation of a UCT lecturer who used Adolf Hitler as an example, talking about the Holocaust, and he was then accused of being a Holocaust denier. Uh, I don't think that the gentleman is a Holocaust denier, and Chris Roper and I probably agree on that. But that's kind of where we almost part part ways on this whole series story here. So Times Live parent publication, the Sunday Times decided to make a Lou Shaba its Mumpar of the week, writing his logic like that of all Mumpars is scrambled and hard to follow. Loazi uh, Lou Shaba claims Hitler committed no crime. Reason all Hitler do was was to do to white people what white people had normally reserved for black people. So, hmm. Yeah, and so to that, uh, Chris Roper says, seriously, what is wrong with some of our newsrooms? Do they just exist as a stealth marketing project for Helen Zilla's new self-help business book, Go Anti-Woke or Stay Broke? Never mind the bigotry of, and, and misogynistic effort to uh, defame Helen Zilla. We'll get back to that. The irony of it in his own op-ed, nonetheless. He says this isn't breaking news. It's breaking the news. He doesn't say the news, but breaking the news. And I agree with him. But are you just waking up, Chris Roper? Are you just realizing that media outlets have been breaking the news, destroying news and turning it into sensationalism and leftist drivel for years? Probably not because you reside on that side of the political spectrum. So you've probably missed out on this phenomenon that's been happening for a very long time now. As in damaging people's trust in journalism in pursuit of the quick click, you're basing what is effectively an accusation of Holocaust now on a 12-second clip cut out of an almost 55-minute video. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. It's inappropriate and it's sensationalist. It gets attention, which is what the media want. They don't care about the truth. Now, in this, you said that the Sunday Times uh, reporter uh, said something about um, Loazi Lushaba hailing a Nazi madman. You said you watched the lecture and I can't find that anywhere. The journalist literally seems to have made it up. Probably. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Journalists who are so eager to labor, label Lou Shaba as, at the very least, a Hitler sympathizer are writing from their own blind spots. Remember that phrase. Even worse, they are writing without taking the time to do even the most superficial investigating. Remember that comment. I must believe they didn't bother, as if they had, and they're still writing these stories, then they're idiots, and it's time they moved on to being government spokespersons. And remember that comment. I'll come back to all those. Speaking of journalists writing from their own blind spots... Have you read Helen Zilla's book, Chris Roper? What is your basis for calling this a stealth marketing product? Your, your, your point about denigrating Helen Zilla. Seriously, what is wrong with some of our newsrooms? Do they just exist as a stealth marketing project for Helen Zilla's new self-help business book, Go Woke, Anti-Woke or Stay Broke? What is that? What does Helen Zilla have to do with this comment? It's particularly egregious that you, you attack her without any substance. She's Jewish. And anti-Semitism is a theme that runs in this article, which you seem to point out. Yet you employ an anti-Semitic comment and move right past it. Now, I'm not one of those people like on the left who think that anytime you speak out against someone who is this group or that group, that makes you that. I'm not saying that Chris Roper is anti-Semitic, not even the least. What I'm saying is it's ironic that you moan about anti-Semitism later in the book and Holocaust denial when you actually make an unfounded you know, dig at a Jew. In South Africa. Remember his comments. Journalists in their blind spots. You have a blind spot against Helen Zilla. Why is that? A genuine hero of the liberation era. A woman who risked her life, her safety, her family's safety, banning, imprisonment, or worse, 
to get to the truth. She's the journalist that exposed how the police killed Steve Biko. Not anyone else. She did it under apartheid. She's the one that got us the straight story on what happened to Steve Biko. And she took great risk for that. She is a brilliant person, and um, this is just a hatchet job. And she's not even part of the story. So what's the point? Now, Chris Roper, for his part, says, I dislike that intensely. It's kind of intellectual snobbery. Well, I agree. There is intellectual snobbery here, and it involves Chris Roper. So let's point out something. He talks about people not doing their research, just as most superficial investigating. In this op-ed, he says that uh, Lushaba drew an example from the United States of how the very same law may be interpreted by people differently. There was never a law enacted in America to prohibit slavery. All that changed was the category human in Amendment 14 was expanded to include black Americans. And for this, as an apologist, Chris Roper explains what Lushaba meant was that his contention is that if black people in America had the right to interpret the law under slavery, they would have interpreted it differently to the way white people interpreted it. Well, first off, that's not germane, your comment there, because we're talking about the end of slavery. So what black people and white people thought when slavery was legal isn't germane to the comment that you claim Lushaba is making here. And carrying the water for Lushaba is just not even remotely objective. So let me just set the record straight. What are you talking about the 14th Amendment? You have no idea what you're talking about. Let's talk about 13th and 14th Amendment. It was the 13th Amendment. So you're saying there was never a law and act in America to prohibit slavery. That's a factual error or a downright lie. Well, let me help you with this. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution was passed by Congress on the 31st of January, 1865. It was ratified on December 6th of 1865 because many states were in rebellion and they didn't get a vote, so it was easy to reach the three quarters with the states in the North. The 13th Amendment changed a portion of Article 4, Section 2 of the Constitution. Section 1 of the 13th Amendment, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So what part of that do you not understand? And talk about superficial investigating. You can find this on Google. You can find this anywhere. You simply have to have a superficial knowledge of the history and the politics of the United States to know this. You can't be bothered to read our Constitution. It only takes up a couple pages. I've read your lengthy Constitution in South Africa. Section 2, Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. All the power right there vested in the Congress, and this abolishes slavery. On January 31st, 31st, 1865. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. What part of that do you not understand? That has nothing to do with the 14th Amendment. This is a lie. It's a fabrication and it's disgraceful. And you carrying the water for this UCT lecture who's clearly uninformed about the history and political science of the United States and carrying the water to cover for him is shameful. It's shameful. It's as bad as you're whining about people taking a 12-second clip and taking it out of context. Talk about something unrelated. You're dragging the United States into a conversation about the Holocaust. We had nothing to do with that Holocaust. We ended the Holocaust. We fought and destroyed fascism. You're, ugh, this is disgraceful. Disgraceful. That's the 13th Amendment. Let me help you out again, Chris Roper. The 14th Amendment relates to citizenship rights, equal protection, and it had subclauses for apportionment and civil war debt. This was rat- or passed by Congress on the 13th of June, 1866, and ratified on the 9th of July, 1868. Section 1, which is the section that's germane to the issue that you're talking about, but not slavery. It's ensuring that people who were slaves are now considered citizens. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So what are you talking about? Talk about superficial investigating. You're going to sit here and pontificate about America. You have no idea what you're talking about. No idea whatsoever. And on an issue of slavery, let's talk about slavery. The United States, on the 2nd of March, 1807, Congress passed a law that prohibited the importation of slaves into any port or place within the jurisdiction of the United States from any foreign kingdom, place, or country. That ban took effect on January 1st, 1808. 1808. 
57 years before the end of the Civil War, before slavery was officially ended, we stopped the legal importation of slaves. It became a capital offense for which at least one person was executed in the history of the United States. So you don't know what you're talking about, so get your story straight and stop your nonsense. Now, I meant for this to be a short video, but we're already at 10 minutes just explaining the things that are going on here. There's much more to this. I'll unpack more, but there you have it, folks, in his own words, hoisted on his own petard. Chris Roper, complaining about superficial investigating and about journalists who jumped the gun without the context, but then carrying the water for the UCT lecture, then said all these falsehoods about the United States. There was never a law enacted in America to prohibit slavery. That's utter nonsense. There was a law enacted in 1807, which took effect in 1808, over two centuries ago, to stop the importation of slaves. Obviously, the intent of that was for slavery to eventually end. It's the first step. And the second step is that on January 31st of 1865, we passed a constitutional amendment which explicitly forbid slavery. Get your story straight. Stop lying about my country. You don't know what you're talking about. And you're complaining about other people. Is this the quality of lectures that we have in universities in South Africa? It's disgraceful. This is the quality of journalism we have in South Africa. We've seen this time and again. Cherry picking, selective reporting, and narratives. Get the facts right. Next time, I'll address the concept or, or the point that the UCT lecture makes about the Herero and other massacres and genocides took place, which he also gets factually incorrect. And once again, Roper carries the water for the UCT lecture. We do agree on one thing, Chris Roper, as I mentioned previously. Taking 12 seconds out of this lecture is illegitimate. You can't take a 12-second vignette and say, aha, carrying the water for someone who doesn't even know the history of the United States and falsely claims the United States never enacted a law against slavery. That's utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. Folks, thanks for tuning in to Chris Wine Africa. Appreciate your support. Please become a subscriber if you're not already one. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you write abusive comments, they'll just get deleted. So, you know, don't waste your time. And um, I want to thank you for your time, your patronage, and this, as I said, is a reaction video to an article that appeared in Business Live by Chris Roper. How the media broke the news. Well, how op-ed broke reality. There you go, folks. Thanks a lot.